Hey there, welcome back. My name is Katie, if you're new to my channel, and this is Louisiana Cooking and Living. And today we are gonna be doing our third video in our January, hashtag January 2024 collaboration. And today we are gonna be canning some beans. I'm so thankful for this collaboration because I have had so many canning projects going on in my brain and I just keep putting them off. And this has got me where I'm more focused on getting these done and that makes me happy to know that I'm filling up my pantry shelf. I've been having these actual dry beans for a while, at least the black beans, I have had them for a while. We're gonna do, be doing black beans and pinto beans. We use a lot of beans in our house, we eat a lot of Mexican food, but beans can be used in so many different ways. You can use them in chili, you can use them in soups and casseroles, in Mexican food, making refried beans, there's so many different applications for beans. And if you have them already um, on your shelf in cans or jars, I guess really what they are, um, it makes them much easier to use and um, more of a convenience item because you don't have to pre-cook the beans then because they would already be cooked in the jars. And so today we're gonna be using the dry canning, not the dry canning, we're using the soaking method. So that when you soak the beans ahead of time, it breaks down the phytic acid in the beans and allows you to be able to digest them more easily and doesn't cause um, the cramping that you might have from beans, maybe a little gas. So it helps all that process because it breaks down that phytic acid. And the way you do that is you soak them for 18 to 20, 12 to 18 hours beforehand and you put in a, um, an acid like a lemon juice or a apple cider vinegar. Today we're gonna to be using apple cider vinegar and we're gonna um, soak our beans. So we'll soak them today and then tomorrow we will can them. Um, <clears throat> it's I'm doing pint jars, that'll be best for my family because you can always, excuse me, always use two pints if you need a quart. Um, but if it's just, you know, our little family and I'm making refried beans, I only need a pint of them, which is about how much a can of pinto beans on the store shelf would be the equivalent. Um, so for a pint jar, you need a half a cup of dry beans-ish per pint. I'm gonna do a little bit less than that half a cup because I do want to add a piece of onion and a garlic clove and a piece of bacon to my jars um, when I go to can them. But for now, we're gonna measure out how many beans we need so the way my pressure canner works, and I'll leave a link to all my um, canning equipment in the description box. It doesn't cost you any extra to use my links to buy these items, it just helps my channel out. Um, but for my pressure canner, I can double stack my pint jars. If I have um, the regular mouth lids, I can put 20 jars on my canner, and if I have wide mouth, I can put 16 jars. So what I'm gonna do, I have more black beans, so I'm gonna do regular mouth with my black beans and wide mouth with my pinto beans, if that makes sense at all. And um, so we're gonna measure these out and we're gonna get them soaking. All right, so I have my two bowls here. And I didn't mention, but Barbara Sue from Kowalski's Mountain is the one that um, is putting this collaboration together, so I wanna thank her. And also, if you don't follow Becky at Acre Homestead or Jessica at Three Rivers Homestead, they both have done this method and they are a great source of canning, homesteading, um, gardening, all kinds of information. I love watching them. So I would highly recommend you following them. All right, so my smaller bowl, like I said, I'm gonna do 16 of the Pinto. So I'm just gonna quickly measure out approximately half a cup per 16, so I need eight cups. I'm gonna get a cup measure so using half a cup for everyone. Now these are store-bought beans, so they have already been pre-washed. If I come across something, I will pull it out. Pinto beans are so pretty. They start off very speckledy, if you can see that. They're very pretty beans. Now I lost count. I think it was at seven. Six? Y'all, I just lost count of how many beans I had.
All right, that's eight cups, I think. So one thing when I was looking for dried beans to buy, since I did not, I did grow some pinto beans, but not near enough to can, is I wanna make sure if I'm gonna buy something to can and put on my shelf, if I can't find organic, at least I can find a non-GMO on there. So I did find that on there. So I'm okay with this. And I'm gonna need 10 cups of the black beans. Now these black beans I did get at Costco, so these are organic. Um, so I need 10 cups of these to fill my 20 pint jars. And I have canned these before. I'm just got one jar left, but that's why my bag is already open. So I need 10. Again, if you see something when you're dumping them, pick it out. So you will need a pressure canner to do these beans because um, they are a low acid food and they cannot be water bath canned. You do have to pressure can these. All right, like I said, we're gonna add a couple tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, or you could use lemon juice if you have that instead. And this just breaks down that phytic acid. We will rinse these after they have soaked for their 18 hours and um, It'll rinse that off. So you're gonna put a good bit of water in here because they will absorb this water and we don't want them to turn dry. Or not or run out of water to absorb. So we're gonna put a good bit of water. All right. Switch bowls here. All right, so we have our beans soaking. They will soak for 12 to 18 hours, and we will come back together tomorrow when these are done soaking, and we will get these canned up in our pressure canner and have beans to last us for a good while. And uh, so we'll see you back tomorrow. Hey there, and welcome back. Um, so our beans have been soaking overnight, and we are going to move on to the next step. And the next step is to actually pre-cook. So we're gonna drain these beans, rinse them, and we're gonna get them in our stock pot, and we're gonna pre-cook them for 30 minutes. They're gonna to come to a boil. Let me just read this exactly. Uh, cover with water, bring to a boil for 30 minutes is what we're gonna do. We'll turn it, when it comes to a boil, we'll turn it down to like a simmer, and let that go for 30 minutes. So we're gonna get these drained and rinsed, and then we'll get them over into our stock pot. So the first ones we're going to do are the black beans because it is the bigger bowl of beans. I don't know if you can, I know you can't really tell on the black beans, but if you can tell in these pinto beans, I had to keep putting water in here to cover them, make sure they stayed covered all night. And they've plumped up nicely and they're pretty soft. So I'm actually going to get a, um, a measure cup to scoop these into my strainer.
All right, so now we're gonna cover this with water. We'll bring this to the stove and bring it to a boil, like I said, and then let it simmer for 30 minutes. All right, that looks good. We'll get this over to the stove and then we'll move to the next step. All right, so the next step is I want to um, put a little piece of onion and garlic in each one of the jars and some bacon. So I'm gonna get that chopped up while we're waiting on that to come to a boil. All right, so I went on and peeled my garlic and if it was big cloves, I would cut them in half just so that they weren't um, too big in the jar. So I have 34 jars, so I'm gonna do 34 pieces of onion and 34 pieces of bacon. Um, I went on and peeled two onions. I wasn't sure <clears throat> how many this would take. So let's see. I'm just gonna chop this up into chunks and I'll break them up into jars. All right, I know this isn't the best quality bacon, um, just health-wise, but I did buy the lower sodium. I did try to find that at least. Again, I don't know how much I'm going to need. I just pulled some out and we'll see how many chunks I get. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 slices in here. If each jar gets two, that's seven jars, 14, 21, 28. Okay, so maybe they'll all get three pieces of bacon in it. All right, so we have all this ready to go. The only other thing we're gonna do is add salt to our jars, just a half a teaspoon. It's not for preserving, it's just for um, flavoring our beans. So we're getting those beans to a boil and um, then we'll be back to put them in the jars. All right, so our timer is about to go off. So we're gonna go ahead and start putting our ingredients into our jars. All right, we're gonna put a half a teaspoon of salt in each jar. Next, we're gonna put a piece of onion in each jar. garlic clove in each jar. And then I think we decided what three pieces of bacon for each jar. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands and then we'll start ladling these up. All right, I'm gonna strain most of the juice for now and then we will add that back in. Now these beans aren't completely cooked all the way, so they will finish their cooking process in the canning process. So we're just gonna get these ladled up into our jars. I'm using this funnel, canning funnel. And we're gonna go let me check my notes, just the headspace. We're gonna do a one inch headspace. All right, we'll get these um, in the jars and then we'll move on to the next step. All 
All right, my estimate was almost correct. I was short three jars worth of beans, but that'll be fine. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some hot water. So we have hot beans, we're adding hot water, and I have my three quarts of water in my pressure canner heating up. And we're gonna just do that one inch head space. And then we're gonna use a chopstick to de bubble to make sure all the nooks and crannies have water and they're not any air bubbles in there. So now I'm gonna just go around and deep bubble and top off any water I need to add. So our next step is to take a paper towel and dip it in to some vinegar and wipe off our rims to make sure they're good and clean so that they will seal properly. So you always need to use your canner's directions because everybody's canner is different. Um, we are going to screw these down fingertip tight. We're not going to crank them down. Um, but you need to check for your elevation, for your processing times, how much water goes in your canner, how many jars you can fit in your canner, if you can double stack your canner. There's so many variables. So always check your manual. So I have a trivet in the bottom of my canner so that there's no bouncing around to cause breakage. And then we will use a second trivet in between because we can double stack these pints in my canner. my little jar lifter here so that it don't get any hot water on me. I'm going to go ahead and turn my temperature up since I'm getting these in. it down and then we can just stack our second layer all right the next thing we're going to do I'll pull you a little closer so you can see is this is our pressure gauge we want for my elevation 11 pounds of pressure but first, what we need to do is to push all the air out of the canner. So we're gonna watch this valve here, and when steam starts coming out of this at a steady stream, we'll set our timer for 10 minutes. Once the 10 minutes are up, we will put our weight jiggler on here, and then we will get up to pressure, and then we will start our timer. For these pints, we're gonna go for 75 minutes. If you're gonna do quarts, you need to do 90 minutes. So we'll set our timer for 75 minutes. Um, once this starts um, steaming, I will bring you back and show you what that looks like. 
All right, as you can see, we have a steady stream of steam coming out of here. So we're gonna set a timer for 10 minutes and then we will put our weight on there. Like I said, for my elevation, I'll bring it up to 11 pounds of pressure. Once it gets there, then I'll set my timer for 75 minutes and let it go um, for 75 minutes. And um, once the 75 minutes are off, up, we will turn our burner off and we'll let the pressure totally release on its own. Once it comes back to zero, then we'll take our weight off. And then we'll still let it sit there for a few minutes and then we'll open the lid away from us, okay? All right, so we'll be back after that is done. Also, in the meantime, I have my pinto beans on the stove getting their 30 minutes of cook time and I've already put my um, ingredients in my jars. So they're ready to go and we will get all these beans cooked. All right, so this is all of our beans we got canned. We got 12 and a half of the pintos and we got 17 of the black beans. Now two of my black bean jars did not seal, so I will put those in the fridge and they will be used in the next few days. So just a tip, um, when you uh, store your beans or anything you can, you do not store it with the, I have the ring on this one because this is one of the ones that did not seal. You take the ring off, you're gonna completely wash your jar to store it. And how you know, besides it doesn't, so, does it pop? This one pops. This is the one not sealed. Another tip or reason or way you know is if you pick it up by that lid, it does not come off. That's another way you know it's completely sealed. So you do not store with the rings on them. You wash your jars, you label them, you store them in your pantry. I was trying to think if there's any other things I need to tell you about storing your jars. I guess not. And if you have a question, you can leave it in the comment section below. I also want to thank again Barbara Sue, I want to get her name right, from Kowalski Mountain for um, getting this collaboration together and all the other ladies that are taking part in this collaboration. Um, I just really appreciate this and getting to share all my canning with you guys. So excited about getting this on the pantry shelf. This will not last us a whole year. I'll have to do this again. We eat a lot of Mexican food and um, so we will be eating all this. I will be doing, um, my plan is to do some strawberry preserves and blackberry preserves next week for you to um, get to follow along with that. And I have a different technique for pectin besides just buying the dry pectin to add. So I'll be sharing that little technique and tip with you guys and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.